Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, today is September 22 of 2021. Another crazy month in this crazy world. Just a quick update. Um, I've been on Gab. And uh, if YouTube ever deletes me, well, just look for me on Gab. Uh, there's uh, three main Bible groups I'm on. Bible study, Christianity, and uh, Orthodox Christianity. And I learned something new today. Um, there was a guy that was t talking about infant baptism. And I was always taught, well, you know, believer's baptism. you got to be old enough to believe before you get baptized. Not saying that I necessarily agreed with that, but, you know, I didn't see any real, much of a real point to baptize children. However, one thing is true is... The Greek Orthodox and the Eastern Orthodox, uh, they would baptize babies. And the good thing about it, though, is that when you would baptize a child, as a parent, you were obligated to give them a Christian education. And no, that doesn't include really so much the public schools, because public schools are not a... They're an antichrist education, right? So... But I asked this guy, I said, okay, you know, I wasn't arguing or combative. I just said, can you show me where it says baby baptisms in the Bible? I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm ignorant. And he ported, por, uh, uh, pointed me to Cornelius. And I read that and I was like, oh, why didn't I ever see that before? Let me read it to you. Now, here's another one, uh, Acts 16, verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized, and when she was baptized, and her household... So not only was she baptized, her household. Now, this doesn't tell you how old the people were, but I'm, you know, her household was baptized. So evidently, if there was a baby, it got baptized. So uh, this story is in Acts 10. I mean, you could make a whole study out of this, but I'm just going to do something real quick here. Cornelius comes to Peter. Peter is gets the sheet with all the unclean beasts, and everybody uses that and says, oh, see, see, we can eat unclean foods now. But that's not what the, the thing was. It was the, 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 Peter was told not to call any man common or unclean. And look up Jeremiah 3.8. And then look up Jeremiah 31, 31. Cornelius was probably an Israelite. I mean, I'm positive he was. But, um, so let's look at Acts 10, 22. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, into his house, into his house, and to hear words of thee. So they're calling Peter to go to the centurion, the centurion's house, right? Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen, his kinsmen and near friends. So not only did he call together his family, but he called together his, his good friends, right? 
And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many, and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should call, not call any man common or unclean. So when they tell you the sheep being laid down with all these unclean beasts is telling you that, well, now God made pig. Uh, it's, it's clean now. You can eat it. Um, Peter tells you right here not to call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. You know, why'd you call me? What, what, what's up? And Cornelius, and Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. Behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Uh, this, this man's an angel, by the way. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call thither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. In every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted in him. Uh, what nations? The twelve nations of Israel, right? That's what I think. Certainly not the Canaanites. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, there you go, right there. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom... They slew, who slew? In the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree, him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that, it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, that through his name, what name? Jesus. You know, there's a reason why they want to get rid of Jesus and use Yeshua HaMashiach. What do you want to bet the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of, the son of perdition, is going to call himself Yeshua. You watch, people. You watch. I mean, I'm not claiming to be a prophet, but if I was a betting man, that, that'd be where my money would be on. To give him all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them. And they of the circumcision were, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles, that word Gentiles uh, in the Greek is ethnos. You ever heard of a ethnic group? You know, Caucasian, Negro, Asian. Uh, yeah ethnic group ethnos that's where we get it from 
And it means nation or nations, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them, them, to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now, it doesn't say there were children there, but if there was children there, they got baptized. I mean, it says his household. I mean, there it is. You know, Acts 10. Two witnesses. So, you know, I was kind of sort of on the fence about infant baptism. I mean, I don't think it was a bad thing. But I didn't think it was good either. But now I kind of look at it and it's like, yeah, maybe, you know. Um, old Bob don't have it all figured out, believe me. Bob's still learning. So, yeah, a gab's not too bad. Uh, at least uh, when I get a, um, a Zio, uh, a zombie, Zio Ombi, a zombie, um, I can rebuke them properly without having to worry about uh, fascist book. You know, Zucker Borg, we are the Borg. You will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. That's for all you Trekkies, next generation people. Yeah. Zucker Borg. Um, there's a few of them, you know, but uh, if they stick around long enough, they'll uh, either gobble blind their eyes or they'll learn. So I've had a few people block me, but I don't care. You know, if, if, if I'm going to quote some uh, Bible and you're going to call it any, you know what, <laughs> they deserve to be deceived. They really do. One thing I like about the um, Orthodox, the Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, uh, the Greeks gave us the New Testament. There are zero manuscripts of, or partial manuscripts of the Old Te uh, New Testament, New Testament. There's even a Old Testament uh, Greek copy called the Septuagint. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't done a lot of research on it, but I wouldn't doubt it um, being good thing. I haven't compared it yet. There's so much to learn in history and Bible studies and what have you. But I was talking to some people that were uh, Greeks. Now, you got to realize, the Greek of the New Testament was called coin Greek, K-O-I-N-E. Not a coin you put in your pocket, but... And, you know, over 2,000-something years, it's changed. Just like English. I can take you and give you uh, the old English copy of Beowulf, B-E-O-W-U-L-F, I think. I took English literature in college. We were reading this. I, I don't even know if it's English. I think it's Anglo-Saxon. Uh, you have a hard time reading that. I mean, take a look at a King James 1611, the actual 1611, before they standardized the spelling and updated it. Uh, it's not that easy. You know, it's changed. And you're only talking four or five hundred years. You know, can you imagine 2,000 years, how much Greek has changed? You're talking the language of Aristotle and Plato and, all, you know, that kind of stuff. But I was talking to some people. Um, there were Greek Orthodox here in the States. They spoke Greek through fluently and they knew English fluently. And the uh, so-called the Archdiocese of the USA was actually considering doing a translation of the 
Greek New Testament into English. And they looked at it, and they looked at the King James, and then they decided that to try to update the New Testament to an English translation, a new one, would be a waste of time. And I asked them why. They said, well, we on, in, in all honesty, we did not feel we could improve upon the King James. They felt that the people that translated the King James had done an excellent job, and they didn't think they could do a better job. So there was just no point in it. So that is a very, very, very good thing, right? And the Eastern Orthodox Church, they're not poisoned by um, the pre-trib rapture because they're the most persecuted church that ever existed. The Eastern Orthodox Church is the, mo the most persecuted church in the history of Christianity. I mean, without a doubt. They do have some bad points. Um, they do like images, just like the Catholics. Uh, I Not so much uh, statues like the Catholics, but like they'll have pictures and they'll call it, you know, well, that's St. John and, you know, we got his picture up on the wall of our church and stained glass or whatever. Um, there were people called the iconoclasts. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but they used to smash the images. And believe it or not, icon, um, which is Greek for image, uh, they they smash those things because they didn't like people praying, looking at an image. They, no, 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 that's, no, don't do that. And they like to call their Greek priests father, like the Catholics, uh, which the Bible says not to call any man on earth your father. And I ain't talking about your dad, okay? Um but uh, let's see what else but they've suffered they've suffered I mean Turkey the country called Turkey used to be called Greece until the uh, Muslims came and basically killed all the Greeks uh, but there must have been a reason there must have been sin in the camp because the Lord allowed it to happen Otherwise, there would have been a plague and wiped them all out. Which has happened in the past. You know, and people that don't believe that, about God allowing the heathens to overrun his people, well, <laughs> take a look at our the southern border of the United States and uh, take a look at the uh, southern nations in Europe. The European Union, I mean, you know, they're just being overflowed with heathen aliens all over the place. It's unbelievable. So like I say, if, uh, if I'm ever booted off the tube, you can put find me on Gab. And I'm still on BitChute, but yeah, they really put a bad taste in my mouth when they started delete, uh, muting the audio on some of my videos. And I was a paying customer. I wasn't asking them to do it for free. I was actually sending them $20 a month. Nah, I quit doing that. As soon as I started to see my audio is muted, nope, I canceled that. You want to delete my channel? That's fine. But uh, like I say, I'm still on World Truth. Uh, but yeah, there's um, Gab is a bunch of YouTube and fascist book rejects. We're the people that got kicked off and they're congregating there. And I've got to admit, um, the Bible study group and uh, they are 
they don't believe in the pre-trib rapture. And he says, uh, he, he's got a list that uh, people like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, uh, not welcome. Period. You you post some of that garbage, it's going to get deleted. You repost it, you're you, they're, you're banned. I don't know if he knows who Israel is, but I've been posting stuff, and so far so good. Uh, the group that uh, deleted a post was Christianity, not Bible study. Uh, but I heard somebody said that they had an LBGT uh, administrator. So, yeah. And that's the group where they're posting stuff about Trump and news stories. And that's what I, I like Bible study better. A lot better because they're like, no, don't be posting political stuff. Don't be posting news. I don't want to hear it. He says, that's what other sites are for. He says, this is a Bible study site. If it doesn't pertain to the Bible, I don't want it, it. Don't post it here. So we'll see what happens. So, but yeah, the uh, Eastern Orthodox Church, they got uh, millions upon millions have been murdered over the years. I mean, just probably, I, I've read wild estimates, but somewhere between 20 to 80 million uh, Eastern Orthodox Christians were murdered in co under communism in the last oh, 100 or so years. I mean, you know, think about it. Uh, America, Christians have never, in America, Christians have never really suffered for their faith. And they're, they're so convinced, oh, God would never do that to us. We're the extra special uh, saints of God. Never mind that we're a bunch of apostates, for the most part. Well, God would never do that. I mean, he's not a wife beater. God wouldn't beat his wife. Uh, you know, why don't you read the book of Job sometime? How about the first cha first chapter, or first two chapters of Job? Read and tell me about uh, God being a wife beater. You know, these people make me sick. I mean, really, they're not worth my time. But the thing is, somebody wasted their time on me when I was in a doctor's office sick and dying and told me who Israel was and who Israel was not. And, you know, they wasted their time with me and I almost told them off. But, uh, so, there we are, you know. Surprise, the Lord didn't throw me into hell, really. But the thing is, America is going to see persecution. And it's going to be a good thing. Because it's going to wake people up. It really is. Especially when they figure out, you know, a lot of us, some of us, have warned them that the pre-trib rapture was a lie. Oh, no, they tell us. Eh, God's not going to do that. Well, you know what? They're going to they're gonna be watching what's happening. The church being persecuted. And they thought they're not going to be here. And then the church is going to be persecuted by those that they thought were the ones that were going to be persecuted. So the, the, the Jays, who they think were going to be the ones getting persecuted, they're going to be the ones doing the persecution to the church. 
So they're going to be like, oh, wait a minute. This don't make no sense. This is the total opposite of what my pastor, Billy Goat Graham, told me. Did you know Graham's a common Jewish name? Yeah, it is. It is. I live here in South Florida. I know a lot about uh, those kind of names. Yeah. So, so they're going to be the ones that they were told were going to be persecuted are going to be the ones doing the persecution against the church. And they're going to say, wait a minute. This is the time of Jacob, Israel's trouble. We're not supposed to be here. And Israel is supposed to be the ones getting persecuted, not the church. We're not Israel. We're not the, you know, we're not Jacob. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, how come everything that I've been taught about the Bible is being turned upside down? This don't make no sense. Maybe that crazy people that were telling us that the church is Israel, maybe they're right. Huh, what do you think? Huh. So, Jesus warned that if you denied him before men, that he would deny you before the Father and his angels. And these idiots that think that uh, once saved, always saved, eternal security, well, <clears throat> excuse me, they can argue with Christ when they meet him, either in the first resurrection or the second. And you don't want to be part of the second. Bad news bears. Very bad news bears. But people don't realize. For example, television. They spend, if they spend more time watching television and never read the Bible, except for on maybe on Sunday, you know, they read it for 15 minutes on Sunday when they're in their little church. You know, there's a reason they call television, they call it broadcasting. You know, casting spells, broadly casting spells, broadcasting. There's a reason they call that. I mean, people don't realize it. But all these people that go to church, don't read the Bible, watch television, and then bless those that hate and curse Jesus, and... They're going to be, they're going to be in big, let's just say they're going to be in deep doo-doo. Yeah. Up to their nose. Big trouble. Big trouble. And, you know, they won't be able to say, well, nobody told me. Well, I tried. And there was a bunch of other people, too. You know, 15 years ago, uh, when you'd go to a, uh, a pre-trib rapture site and you'd warn them the pre-trib rapture was a lie, 30 of them would jump on you and say, oh, you're, you're a heretic. You're not even saved. Get out of here. God sends them strong delusion. God deceives them. You want to watch television? You want to listen to Billy Goat Graham? Go for it. I mean, I, I I used to really care trying to warn them, but I'm at the point, you know what? They deserve it. They really do. And if you think the Antichrists are the chosen ones, well... All you got to do is pick up the book of John, read chapter 8, and uh, figure out who it was that was trying to kill Jesus. 
Oh, that's right. It was the Romans. Right. Boy, I tell you what, I've made a couple of enemies on uh, Gab. But it's easy to tell who these people are. It really is. And uh, I don't like making fools of Christians. I really don't. But uh, if they're sometimes they need to be rebuked, though. And I do it with scripture, you know. And one of the things that really bothers me is the the people that you know tell you all you got to do is believe in Jesus. Well, James chapter two says even the devil believes and trembles. You know, James James had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. And he grew up with a guy named Jesus. Do you think he knew anything about the Bible? Uh, I think he did. Yeah. he. From what I understand, he was a bishop uh, at some, some church. I'm not sure which one. Um, and he said, uh, works are proof of your faith. Read the second chapter of James. I've done it a bunch of times a bunch of times uh, I beat that horse to death almost but you know faith is proven by what you do proves what you believe you know it really really does and then they'll throw at you and say oh well does that mean that you're saved by works I always tell them, you know what? Read James chapter 2. Take you five minutes or less. Actually, three minutes. I, I could read it in three minutes or less. You know, works don't save you. Works are proof that one is saved. That's just the way it is. What you do will prove what you believe. So, you know, if you if you love your spouse, you're going to be good to them. Not because uh, that's required for them to love you. No, you're going to do it because you care. It's just the way it is. You know, works Follow faith, always. But you always got to watch out for those heretics. They will, they will try to destroy anything and everything. My favorite ones are the, well, Jesus was a J. Uh, well, Jesus was of the tribe of Judah, yeah. But he wasn't an antichrist. And he didn't practice the... Uh, what they do and Jesus called certain group of them hypocrites a lot a lot and they didn't like him for it and they're the ones that followed him around trying to trip him up so they could accuse him before Rome and uh, yeah but Hey, we'd rather watch TV broadcasting than uh, bother with Bible reading. Oh, that's so boring. And we don't even know what Bible to use. There's 666 different versions of the Bible. And they don't make any sense. It's just unbelievable. I, I just... All I can do is shake my head and... It makes me sick sometimes. You know, I totally anticipate in the next three to five years, half the country being dead. I really do. And uh, it'll, yeah, well, let's just say a certain medical type treatment will uh, end up 
costing a lot of people their lives. But I totally anticipate a lot of deaths. And a lot of people don't know it, but the uh, Noahide laws, uh, you know, <laughs> the penalty for being a Christian is death by beheading. And one thing I really admire about Gab is uh, there's a lot of people that know a lot of things about what's going on. Believe me, there's a lot of them. I mean, I'm I'm nobody special. I'm just another guy that knows a lot of the same stuff. Um, one of the things I've been trying to warn them about is, um, let's just say which group uh, runs the um, the medical treatments and the purpose of the medical treatments. Yeah. Yeah. I've been putting a lot of that on um, Gab uh, in pictures. Things that would have gotten me kicked off of uh, you-know-who uh, and uh, Tube and uh, Fascist Book. Yeah. Well, I'm permanently banned from uh, Fascist Book, so I don't care. This is like the second or third time what do they say? Third time's a charm. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't care. I'm enjoying uh, my time on Gab. I really am. I'm probably going to go pro. Um, but, uh, yeah. Got to wait until I get some more money coming in. So, whatever. Uh I'm telling you, a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs. If you have to take a choice between your job and uh, your health, uh, you know. And let me tell you something, people. If you do lose your job, sell your house immediately. There is a company called BlackRock, you know, and... They're paying between 20 to 50% over and above the market rate. So if you had a house that was worth 100,000, they're paying, they would pay 120 to 150 cash. Take that money, go buy a trailer, get the heck out of Dodge. And, you know, cut back. Cut back, way back. You know, it's better than losing your house and getting nothing for it. But BlackRock is affiliated with the um, the banking system. And they're just printing money and passing it out and buying things. You know, when I lived in Denver in the early 90s, I was able to go and get a dollar breakfast. A dollar breakfast. Yeah. I worked nights. What time did I get off? I forget. But around 9 o'clock or so, I would go hit breakfast. And, you know, you're talking two eggs, toast, and potatoes. A buck. I, you know, go to IHOP now or, or Denny's or whatever. Uh... Pfft. What is this, like seven or eight bucks now? I mean, really? You know, candy bar used to be a nickel. You know, Snickers or, you know, Hershey bar or whatever. Now it's a dollar something, which means they have diluted the money supply by well over 20 times. They're just printing money. And every time they print more money, the value of the money goes down. So, I mean, it's going to get to the point where money's worthless. So, if you lose your job or have to take the uh, medical thing, I suggest you sell it. 
get a trailer or something and you know do whatever you got to do that's that's my suggestion they're going to lock us out of society one day it's uh i i don't honestly i don't believe that the um medical treatment is the mark of the beast i don't think so but i think it's getting us ready for it and i think it's close i really do because the mark of the beast uh, the beast has to be here for the mark of the beast to be the mark of the beast. I think it's in Revelation 13. But another thing, too, it says it's in the right hand or in the forehead. I think what they're doing is getting people ready for it. But even if it is not the mark, um, all I know is people... Send me an SD card and I will send you all the health information that I have and you will be convinced as I am that I would rather live out in the woods than be forced to take a thing that I can't say because I'll get hit for medical disinformation doesn't matter how true it is you know there's doctors that are losing their youtube channels because of medical misinformation can you imagine that a doctor yeah losing his uh channel because they don't like what he says You know, that makes me wonder, what are they trying to hide? And when you got the same group of people own the media, own the pharma, pharmaceuticals, uh, YouTube, fascist book, uh, and all these big companies that are trying to get all their employees to, you know, do whatever. Uh, makes you wonder, you know, really makes you wonder. And besides that, they hate us. They really do. They hate us. They absolutely hate us. They're Satanists and they hate us. And the feelings mutual. I hate them too. I hate all those that hate Jesus Christ. And I wish the Lord would throw them in the lake of fire now but they are serving a purpose right now god is going to use them as a rod of correction upon his people you know world war one was a wake-up call the stock market crashed at 29 you know you had the roaring 20s people were getting you know, moving to the cities and having good paying jobs and, uh, you know, the all those crazy dances and stuff they had in the 20s and uh, they were turning into a bunch of whores back then. And then the stock market crash and then World War II. And before that, you had um, the Dust Bowl in the Midwest. And before that, you had the Civil War. All these things are wake-up calls. We'd have been a godly nation. It never would have happened. None of these things. But we are not a godly nation anymore. And all these church people think that there's some special thing you know, if they read their Bible, they would know judgment begins at the house of God. Judgment begins at the house of God. But they don't believe that. Nope, we don't believe that. God's going to pre-trib rapture us out of here. We're going to fly away. So, so, yeah, send me up an SD card, people. And uh, I'll send you some medical 
stuff. Um, really, really interesting stuff. All of you that I've sent uh, USB drives and what have you, get it back to me. Because there's going to come a day when all these Bible studies and stuff are going to be taken off the air. And that's it. My work will be done. I don't know if the Lord's going to have me uh, in a camp preaching or out in the wilderness teaching. Either way, I belong to him. His choice, not mine. And uh, I've known this for a long time. A long time. I've known since 1990 that everyone that names the name of Christ might have to be called to give their lives for him. Tell that to your average Baptist church here in America or or one of these charismatic churches. Oh boy. The, you know, the TBN crowd. And it amazes me that people send them money. They support those devils. I, I've just... Oh, God's going to bless you. A hundred times if you send me money. Praise the Jesus. Uh, they deserve each other. See, those kind of people, they're not sending money to, to help support a ministry. They're, they send money because they're greedy. Because they've been promised a ten times return. So they send them a hundred dollars because they're greedy wanting a thousand dollars back. Not because they care about reaching souls or, you know, that's not what it's all about. No, they're greedy dogs. The pastors, so-called, and their flock. It's all they care about. You know, the Bible warned children would be disobedient to parents. The Bible warned that there'd be a great falling away. And we're here, people. We're here. I mean, when I was a little kid in the early 60s, I remember women wearing scarves on their heads. Their heads were covered. Maybe not quite like, uh, you know, the, the Muslim women. But I remember that. You know... America was like, leave it to Beaver. Well, it ain't leave it to Beaver anymore. Unbelievable. You know, by the way, Marilyn Manson, the self-avowed Satanist, is going to do a movie. It's called, drumroll, Antichrist Superstar. Antichrist, superstar, who in the hell do you think you are? The devil. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if that's going to be the theme song, but yeah. Can you imagine that? Antichrist, superstar. Yeah. Ah, what can I tell you? All right, are you people sick and tired of listening to me? Well, I'm sick and tired of listening to me. People, make sure you keep up with your repentance daily. I mean, I look in the mirror and I'm like, uh, I can't repent enough. Even my repenting needs to be repented of. So... Trust on Jesus. Jesus even said, pray that you be uh, found worthy to escape what's coming. That's the Bob paraphrase, but it, yeah, you get the idea. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. 
Amen.